Guys, welcome to the episode of Into the West Comics. My name is Frank. Sonny is here. Oh, good looking out. Good looking out. Groomed presently. What's going on, guys? Welcome. Looking good. I try. Uh, the hot dog corn dog Paul is spoken for, and he's here. <laughs> I'm only gonna do that a couple more weeks. It looks good. Yeah, I think. <laughs> it no, it, it looked it looked good at first. Now it looks better. I don't know, he looks like a real human being. I feel like you mean the opposite of what you just said. Uncle yeah. Nephew Shane is here, <laughs> and he's like grooming real... everyone. That is true. He's a groomer. You uh, look good. Why he brought a comb? Oh, yeah, hold on. Well, he There's brought the pomade, he said, so it's yeah. looking extra yeah. silver Barrel? today. Wow. You're looking good, man. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. It looks great. Well, good morning, everybody. Is this why you really... <laughs> great t-shirt, by the way. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, oh, thank you. He's brushing his beard. That's why he's really little behind. <laughs> oh, I'm, and, I got a show uh, to do. Please welcome our special guest, uh, the friend of the show. He has been a uh, uh, busy guy, it seems. He's always busy whenever we get a chance to talk to him. We, uh, we'd like to soak up uh, the time that we get with him. Absolutely. Um, you know him from his work on Action Comics, The Incredible War World Run, as well as Alien. Uh, we affectionately call him the franchise from the city titles that he's been able to do over the years. Absolutely. Both uh, 007 and for King and Country. And uh, currently, he is writing uh, Green Lantern War Journal, as well as The Incredible Hulk Talk to him. for Man. Marvel Comics. My goodness. His upcoming project, Crocodile Black, that we're going to dive into a little bit here in just a moment. Super stuff. Where's the... Please welcome a uh, service member, a band member, an extended member of the Into the West family, Mr. Philip Kennedy Johnson. That was a hell of an intro, I know. by the way. I was yeah. like, I got me well, hyped up. Well deserved. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I brought the, uh, Frank, the Frank is always too kind to me. I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, You're the only one he's kind I to. Jeez, yeah. man. Uh, never yeah, got I'm never really straight. that kind to Shane. <laughs> never. He's known him too long. So rude. Good to have you, buddy. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Always good to see you guys. I know uh, I know you've been pretty busy lately. Good, uh, good to talk to you and chop it oh up for God. a couple months. I'm, I'm sure it's been a, a wild couple weeks for you. I actually just got another gig that I can't talk about yet. No! Uh, yeah. And I'll, um, I mean, it's so early. I'm not even sure I can tell you guys off, off camera yet. It's, oh, wow. It's like, really? It's just barely <laughs> happening. <clears throat> but, um, but holy shit. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's one oh, of those things. Good? I just, I, I straight up don't have time to do it, but I, uh, it's also a job you don't say no to. So and I, I, I know exactly what I'm going to do with it. And it's oh, going to be dude. sick. Oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be sick as hell. So maybe so off camera we could just guess and you don't have to say yes don't, or no. Don't you can like <laughs> you can make facial you can expressions. Like, you can't confirm or deny anything. Wink twice if no, we're no. correct. <laughs> no, let's 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 focus on what's in front of us. Yes, I'm yes, actually sir, really yes, stoked to talk about Crocodile Black no, today. Absolutely. With y'all. Yes, and, and yeah, like whatever else you want to know about about the books that are out there now, we can talk about all that stuff too. Um, but I've I've been I, I mean I honestly I've been really fortunate with the. The license stuff I've been able to do recently, and I've kind of taken my eye off the ball as far as um, the creator-owned um, books that I wanted to do, um, just because the license books I was doing are so rewarding and um, just exactly the kind of stuff I want to do with a big two, you know. Nice. So I, 
I haven't been doing a lot of creator own until until now. I think my last one was I did Kill a Man with my friend Steve Orlando and Alec Morgan, and I did The Last God, Felspar Chronicles, mm-hmm. a DC Black Label. That's sick. And I think I think this is my first one back since then. So I'm really excited to be doing it. I didn't even realize that it had been that long. That's crazy. Just because you have so many books out that like it didn't register to me that it none of them were creator own. But this is really exciting to have you have something that is yours and from completely from the mind of Philip Kennedy Johnson. Yeah. And uh Yeah, thank you. It was it was quite the quite the start. No, it, get into it. It was just it. it was just a few <laughs> hours ago. We had uh we got a little uh preview to check out the first uh issue of that uh what? limited series. <laughs> Hi. Well sorry we just had a whale come yeah. through the studio. <laughs> Downtown Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The Shout heavy out. whaling Shout area out <laughs> downtown over here. Anyways. Anyways. <laughs> Get back to it. Um, enough about the whales. Uh, with regards to this series, we know that it was probably last year that I think that we were talking a little bit about it because you really couldn't say too much about uh, yeah. as far as the series coming together. Um this has been something you've been working on since uh, we're assuming since COVID or shortly thereafter, because it has a lot of we can't, there's a lot of stuff we can't say about what we've read so far. But um, is this something that sort of came together for you uh, during COVID or shortly thereafter? Uh, the concept. Well, honestly, it kind of started with the um, my frustration with the medium in general and that there wasn't a lot of storytelling being done that dealt with COVID while it was happening. Yeah. Um, back when there was COVID, because, you know, now it's over. That's good. <laughs> right, right, right. Because, uh, you know, we beat it. Anyway, I'm just but, uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> but, Sorry. sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, Trust me, you're good. Anyway, yeah. Too soon. Uh, but <laughs> it, um, well, when it was like the only thing that anyone was talking about, like it had completely reshaped our lives yeah. in every way. And there's like, even then it was politicized, like whose fault is it? Or, you know, it was, it was just a really rough time. But when you, when you looked at the books on the shelf, there was basically no acknowledgement of it. Like there were, there were not many books where, you know, you didn't see anyone wearing a mask. You didn't see anybody doing this stuff that we were all having to do at that time. Yeah. Right. There was like this big kind of collective agreement that we just don't talk about it. And soon it'll be over, like we'll back to normal. Like it's everyone's just ready for it to turn the corner at any moment. And it just didn't, you just weren't seeing it on the page. Yeah. And honestly, that kind of applied to, to film and TV and basically anything except like journalism or like just little things that you would see online. I wasn't seeing much acknowledgement of COVID in any kind of art form, you know, yeah. uh, with the exception of music where you're, you're seeing people like you were seeing yeah. musicians do very creative things. Cause like a lot of ensembles, like big ensemble type stuff wasn't really happening. So people were, you know, reshaping how they were performing and, and getting stuff out there. But, um, there was one issue of Ice Cream Man that did a really cool thing. I think it was like a – I know that book is kind of an anthology anyway, but there was one issue that was like an anthology issue, a bunch of sh- uh, short stories. And I don't think it was by the main creative team, um, but there was a story that followed this little – there was like this little girl who was – I remember her looking out the window. She's stuck in this apartment in, in the city and the dialogue. You could just hear her parents like shouting and arguing in the background all the time, and she was just like – trying to escape but just like looking out the window all the time she would draw a little like she would see people on the street and draw little pictures like around them or over them to change what was happening oh, wow. and i thought that was very creatively done i loved that story and i just really wanted more of that you know um and around that same time i heard a podcast let me think this was i think it was on the daily which is a new york uh, new york times podcast that you put out every day okay. on sunday they do these personal interest things and there was one about a guy who had died in New York and didn't really leave any family behind. And it just is kind of a story about what happens when, you know, when somebody dies with that, you know, that, that live alone. And uh, this particular guy, an older dude, had a pair of boots still like new in the box there. And for whatever reason, it just stuck in my head. Interesting. I, I was just thinking about those boots that had never been worn and I, the story kind of came together of somebody like, what if that guy that was there to kind of, you know, look for phone numbers or look for any kind of next of kin stuff? What if he just took them? And that kind of this, this whole this whole story just sort of pieced itself together in my head. It has changed a lot since then. But now it sort of became the story about 
about the power of masks, um, like psychologically, the power of them, Mm -hmm. like how it it changed you and the distance that came between us during COVID and and especially about the uh, the phenomenon that we saw in that first couple of years where everyone started leaving their shit jobs and shit lives to do to pursue the things that they really wanted to do. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, That was, I think, maybe the most memorable part of COVID to me, aside from the very, you know, personal stuff that we all dealt with in our day to day lives. Right was that phenomenon where people started to leave the things that they never really wanted to do in the first place. People who mm. gave up on the college degree that they didn't, they didn't really believe in or the the shitty entry-level job that they never wanted. Yeah. And, you know, nobody knew what was going to happen. There was this uncertainty that permeated everything. No one knew if it was going to, if this was just the way life is now, you know, what it was going to, nobody living has ever been through it. So what's going to happen? Nobody knows. And people were like, screw it, man. I'm going to go do the thing I always kind of secretly wanted to do. Yeah. Wow. And uh, that That's... really meant a lot to me to see. I, you know, I, I wasn't in that situation, but but seeing people do it, seeing McDonald's go basically empty a, where there's yeah. you know, people can't find anyone to, to work the fryer. That's yeah. a great moment, um, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, in the book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Thanks. laughs> um, that's kind of what the book is about. That's kind of like the statement of faith. That's that's the that's the Agnus Day of the whole book. Is that that beginning where you uh, you kind of you kind of uh, you kind of like the, somebody says out loud what the book is kind of about. Like this is about uh, a, a world in which people are just leaving their lives behind and becoming what they secretly always wanted to be. And um, what if that thing that somebody wanted to be was dangerous man? Mm, you know, yeah. so that, that's kind of what that's kind of what the book's about. So we have this character that has this this uh, this hidden trauma that we don't know much about yet. Like we, they have this whole past that they themselves don't know, and for whatever reason, they uh, they see uh, they go into somebody's home and they see this pair of boots, and for whatever reason, these black crocodile skin boots just stick in their mind, and they can't get rid of it and they don't know why and we'll see why over the course of the series the, the, the book is kind of a slow burn i wish i could have given you the whole series to read <laughs> because it's it's kind of like a like a ski jump and how how the intensity you know builds up like but it. um man i'm stoked for you to read the rest Ooh, like, um, really yeah. it. i think we're all really <laughs> <That's> excited <laughs> yeah and i think you you talked uh you touched just now briefly on the slow burn nature of it and i think the really important part about that separates something that's a slow burn from something that's just kind of meandering and boring is to actually grab the reader and interest them in the, like the mundane stuff going on and the little things and make them interested. And I think you did a really phenomenal job of that in this comic. Um, I messaged you about one moment in particular. Um, Frank and I also talked about that moment and the McDonald's moment is a great example of that. Um, but you you really just managed to make us, even if we don't necessarily like all the characters or completely support all of them, we understand them and we can empathize with them yeah. because of the way, and honestly, the uh, the setting with COVID really lends to that because there's some moments where they're like, oh, do you have this? And he's like, yeah, of course I do, mom. Like, what are you talking about? Right. Um, and it's so easily identifiable that it's like, even though I don't, I can't see myself in this character, I understand yeah. him. Yeah. And then once things start to hit the fan later, I'm really excited. So I just wanted to know what it was like putting that kind of, how easily that family dynamic came together. Um, if any of that you pulled from your own experiences and just talk a little bit more about that. Um, the story, the COVID story that I'm writing in the book is not really, was not my experience, but I do know a lot of people like the characters that are in the book. Like there are, there are parts of various characters that, that I took from. And, uh, I know a lot of those kinds of experiences. I know that we all, like many of us found ourselves living with people much closer than we had been before. Either the people that we were already sort of living with or that we we're already kind of close with. And then suddenly we're like just around them all the time with no escape. Or we find ourselves going home to live with people that we, you know, that we haven't seen in a long time. And it made all these unbelievably tense situations at home where everyone is just scrambling the walls to escape. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to show that. I want to start, you know, try to show some of the tension. I just want to capture all the bits of COVID that didn't really get addressed, man. Uh, I want to see I want to see the guy that that likes wearing the mask. I know people who are more comfortable in masks than out of it. No, that makes and sense. Not just mm-hmm. not just because of the you know, the, the medical stuff, but just because the distance that it creates between you and other people. There yeah, are people that prefer yeah. 
yeah, there are people that prefer life that way. And um, there's also people who um, had to go home. They didn't want to go home and stay with people that, you know, everyone's sheltering in place. And there was this almost like bomb shelter kind of feeling to it for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I want to see that come together. I want to see some of that kind of start to boil over and I want to see where it all leads to. But um, for people who haven't, who don't know the premise that I basically, we just see this guy who's just kind of a loser at first. He's, um, he's living at home, has no prospects. He's one of those people that was living a life that they hated before COVID. He's living at home with his dad he hates and um, he's dealing with some stuff and he's just delivering groceries on an app and that's his, he's got no hope for anything better. And um, he takes groceries to somebody's house and finds him dead in his chair. Mm-hmm. And he's and he's wearing these black crocodile skin boots, and then for some reason everything changes, and that's all he wants is those boots. And then his, he just says like that situation that he has been in, and then the situation that he finds himself in now, he just it just propels him into this whole other future where he's like, oh my god, like what am I doing here? Why am I living here? Um, and uh, his this whole other life just unfolds before him. And you can and, see um, that sort of happening as as he's 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 putting the boots on, he's grabbing the boots and kind of putting putting them on. Yeah, you can see yeah. the images exactly. of crocodiles and stuff like it all in the you know in the panels. It just yeah. it it really does take yeah, you, you into that world. Right. Yeah, man, I, I can't wait for you to read the whole thing. So this is <laughs> this was one book. I was I was tempted to just put this story out as like one big volume because oh, this really? is this cool. is one where it's like one story. It's almost like a. I hesitate to use the word movie because I don't want anyone to feel like it. this. This is intended as a comic, but it's like it's a it's like a story you, that has a beginning, yeah. middle, and end, right, and it's right. the, there's you a trajectory. And I want people to see the whole thing. It's like rather than like many most comics, honestly, that I write feel episodic in the way that a TV show does. Sure, uh, this one feels more like a film where it's like an experience that you you begin and you watch the whole thing play out. Um, but man, I am. Uh, I just can't wait for you to see where it's going. And Som, the the artist, Som, the oh, guy who's doing it, it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. His full name is Somnath Pal, but he goes by Som as an artist. And he, so uh, cool. he lives in Mumbai. Um, super good dude, new father. And if you check out his stuff online, he's he's kind of new to Western comics. He's done a little bit of stuff with Ram V, actually. He's a dear friend of mine. Oh, uh, that and sounds he, accurate. I can see yeah. that. Yeah, right. You can kind of see how how his style would lend itself well to Rom style. Yeah. Um, I kind of I don't think I just I don't I didn't think I found him through Rom, but at some point I I realized that they knew each other, and I was like, Hey, have you worked with Sam before? And it's like, Yeah, dude. <laughs> this would be a good, sick. Like this would be a good get. And I the thing that really drew me to his work is that he has this signature thing that he does. If you check out his sketch work, his like sketchbook type pieces that he puts online, this he has this knack for pieces that, um. If you look up his work, you'll see a lot of images where the the grotesque is like intruding into reality. Like you see mm. a, like a very almost like a mundane image of like a, a man and a woman kissing or a guy driving and smoking or, um, you know, just something that is not out of the ordinary. But there's some kind of grotesque supernatural thing like happening as mm. you're watching and you don't it's I don't know, it's this otherworldly. I like it, you know. Horrifically beautiful thing. I'm like, I like well, that. Kind of like <laughs> though, funny. Phil. Kind of way the way that the panels are sort of layered on top yeah. of each other. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was noticing you know, too. That's yeah. kind of telling its own story in a in a way. Right. And I th- I think his art is incredible. I think it's, yeah, it's, it's a great he's, pairing for you. I yes, mean, he's extremely great. Thank you, good man. pairing. Yeah, he's a great find. And it's if you find those little panels throughout the book, there are these things where you, you get a really surreal moment where like the the boots are intruding on what's happening at like the, the, the dinner table or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those kind of pieces. That's just oh, like just yeah. A hint <laughs> I just, yeah, I, just, I like, just looked at that piece where uh, like there's a mouth, <laughs> there's a spaghetti in the mouth, and then the mouth is yeah, incorporated yeah. in the boot. <laughs> I'm like, right. like, oh my yeah, gosh, yeah. like what is happening here? Or am even I, when am like I crazy the, at this moment, or is this really in the book? Exactly, yeah. That's just like just a <laughs> just like a tidbit. Bit. That's awesome. <laughs> or even the, yeah, uh, like the stuff. Go ahead. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, I was gonna say just to further Shane's point. Oh my god, <laughs> joke from last week. <laughs> um, <laughs> joke from last week. Also true. Someone's though. got a. That is Someone's true. got a girlfriend yeah. who's taking her claim. Yeah, <laughs> he's got a secret um, admirer. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna try to push, <laughs> through. push through. Push uh, through. But he'll be like, I think it's early on. He's walking through a parking lot, and there's this weird kind of almost unsettling red 
like squiggle like black shape and that is like a reoccurring image almost subliminal like the first time i read it i didn't even see it and the second time i read it like, oh, i was like that's awesome i was like whoa that was kind of creepy to realize that yeah. the second time i read through it um and i think that's honestly creepy. through the first uh this like crocodile black for me is landing at a perfect time because you and Psalms kind of feel akin to the way Jeff Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino were telling the story of Tenement. And Tenement just finished. So now I have So now you have something this, to, yeah, you have something this to hop back kind on. of weird, almost psychedelic, almost gothic horror type mm -hmm. where you're trying to figure out not everything's spelled out for you, you're trying to figure out what's going on. Absolutely. And just exactly what There's you're saying. Levels Psalms, to it. Yeah, it's, it's bringing layered. the grotesque into a mundane image is like the first time I read it, I was like, I didn't even notice. Yeah, yeah, and then the second time, it. I was like, that's kind of weird that I didn't see that. Because it's like definitely right there. Sorrentino and uh, Christian Ward are doing, well, Sorrentino's doing the main cover. And then I think Sorrentino and Christian Ward are doing variants. Is that right, Phil? Yeah. Yeah. Sorrentino's doing, I believe the A cover is a Sorrentino cover. Cool. Yeah. And then uh, Christian Ward's doing one. Um, oh, my God. There's another name. I, whose name I forget. There's another really beautiful piece. I'm not sure it's on previews right now but it's really great and um steve Parker beach Park? my friend from action comics is doing oh, as well. oh nice. yeah. yeah so hopefully i actually i'm not sure about how that all how that all played out if that's if he's doing one for number one or if it's if it's a variant for number two but steve is gonna i can already tell you i'm gonna buy it i'm gonna buy the original no matter what it looks like because steve is a fucking savant that's awesome uh, and and he's a horror genius like steve man Steve's going to make history, man. I mean, he, he already is. I People are going to look back on his work like, how do we not worship this guy when he was around? Like, it's he's just an unbelievable talent. And um, horror especially. He just knows everything there is to know about horror movies. Um, so, yeah, I can already tell you, whatever Steve does for this is going to be incredible. Oh, super. Yeah, I, I remember Phil came into town for uh, some signings and stuff when we were uh, Frank and I went and met up with him at a comic store. And it was before we went to dinner that night. And nice. I was going to – I had – uh, Phil signed some of my action comics issues and I literally have the Steve Beach variant of uh, the war world uh, conclusion and I was like I'll have Phil sign the cover of this one and I was like actually I don't want any <laughs> writing on this yeah, cover no, 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 I don't want really. any writing on this cover because it's so <laughs> dope it. so yeah I'm, I'm excited to see what uh, Steve does for the uh, Crocodile Black is that the world revolution? Where yes, like he's that like one. Punch, he's punching that thing. Yes, yeah, so I've, I've got. I have. That's a physical painting. Oh wow! And I have it. I have oh. it framed on my wall. Nice. Yeah. Let's I see this. Yeah, I, bought, I bought that off of him, and he tried to give it to me. He's, Good man. I mean, Steve wow. and I just have a great relationship, and I. I mean, he did his first finished comic for me. Oh wow! Um, have I sh wait? Have I shown you guys this, the the pieces of his that I have here in the house? No, no, uh, no, maybe right. no. I don't think so. Right. Let's go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. So he's uh, hold on. Yeah, I'll show you the ones I have up here. The paintings are downstairs for the action covers. I have the cover, the, the War World Revolution one that you talked about, and I have the um, I believe it is ten fifty. Wait, yeah, ten fifty six. I think where it's uh, it's split into thirds. Where it's like Superman looking really determined, and there's like the the great like the matrix like binary code oh, down yes. the center oh yes and, and, and metallo's face oh that's i know exactly what you're talking about but Ooh. but he and i did a 110 page web comic that was that was the first finished book that steve ever did it's all it's oh, all wow. black and white it's period horror Ooh. it's uh it's it's called the lost boys of the u-boat Brahmin, and it is a it's 110 page it's all on my website right now if you go to philip johnson.com you can see the first comic i ever wrote Sick. Nice. And, <laughs> Paul frantically trying to get the Steve, Paul's like, <laughs> <laughs> go, yeah, go yeah. Ahead, Paul, it's, Paul it's my fan. first. It, it is my first ever comic, so be gentle. It's a little wordy, but it's, it's okay. That's my first story, and Steve crushed it, obviously. Um, and he gave me when the whole thing was done. He gave me. If you can kind of see it here. Oh, this gosh, dude. dope! It's like this little stone Whoa. baby thing. It's, it's, this monster. Oh God, I'm turning. It's like this. Um, I don't know. I feel like we, we've had enough like werewolves and zombies and stuff. And I want to create a different kind of monster yeah. for this book. So, Whoa. Um, so that's what it was. And there's this other piece. MTV Cribs. <laughs> yeah. That's, right. that's what the? so that's dope. Whoa. Yeah, that's awesome. It's like this stone idol that's got like its head's been knocked off. It's, yeah, it's inside yeah. one of these little Nazi crates, kind of like Raiders, you know? 
Oh my God, that's and, creepy. And there's this, I don't know if you can see, but there's writing all over that thing. And it's an actual language that Steve and I did together. No, of course. <laughs> that's awesome. Of course. Wow. So, Oh, that's um, so rad. Anyway, so St- Steve and I are like blood brothers, basically, bound in comics. <laughs> that's, that's right. Sick. Um, so, yeah, Steve and I are very close. And um, he's, man, he's one day finding that dude is going to be my only legacy that matters. <laughs> <It's>, everyone's <laughs> going to be like, this is the guy that discovered Steve Beach. <laughs> that's so, rad. Anyway. Yeah, I think I think your legacy will be a little. You'll be remembered for a little more. I'll just say a little bit yeah. more. You'll be fine. When uh, well, War World gets turned into a major motion picture. So, you know. Yeah. Well, Chat's see, going crazy. Kind of Shout out to everybody as well. Yeah, Tess oh, is in here. Ryan's oh, yeah, in here. Ch- Brendan. Yeah. Everyone's oh, saying what's up. Yeah, they wanted He's you to give a full house hello. tour. <laughs> that's right. Oh, Chucks, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was that was very cool. Um, yeah, wow, that's super dope. Uh, but so, how many issues is it going to be? I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, it's going to be five. Okay. Okay. I mean, there there is potential. Like, if um, if readers respond like violently and they want more, there's potential for another arc. Mm-hmm. But uh, right now, the story that we have planned is five issues. And how was it? Uh, I don't know. I'm sure you have. Um, but what was it like working with Boom Studios on this comic? And how did you get? How did you end up doing it with them? And just how did that part of it come together? Honestly, man, Boom took a chance on me when I hadn't done shit yet. And I, I don't know, I'm just grateful. You know, I just, I, I did uh, Last Sons of America over there. That was my first ever printed book. Um, I was, you know, they took a chance on a, on a nobody. And mm-hmm. I was grateful for it. And after that, I did Warlords of Appalachia, another story mm-hmm. I'm very proud of. Mm-hmm. I did my first license work with them. I just, I cut my teeth at Boom. Right. And, um, and I had done all that stuff with Eric Harburn. Um, Eric and I had a good working relationship, and um, I had this new book I wanted to do. I, I wanted to come back to create our own and do some do some other kinds of stories. Um, I don't want, you know, I deeply love writing Superman and Hulk. I just don't want to be the guy that has, that only ever did those things. I want to. I do want to keep, you That's know, fair. keep my my feet wet in all these different kinds of spaces creatively. And um, I just I wanted to give Boom first crack at it, you know. Because it's, um, I just, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like I owe a lot to Boom. So I wanted to give them first sure, shot of course. At, at doing that's it really there. Cool. And, they, and they said yes. So that's what we did. That's awesome. If they had not, if they had passed on it, that would have been fine. I would have you know, looked elsewhere. But I wanted to make sure that Boom, you know, got got the first chance. Um, so, yeah, that's what led that to, to that. That's so I've been cool. doing it with Eric Harburn has been on that book as well. and now, But now I'm working more primarily with an, another editor there named Ramiro Portnoy, who's also been great. Um, and they've been super cool about reaching out to these, you know, this a murderer's row of cover artists, like Christian Ward and Andrea Sorrentino. And sure. Uh, insane. Incredible artists doing the covers. So, um, yeah. No, I, it's been a really good experience. That's awesome no, I, here. I'd say so. The Christian Ward get is super dope considering how popular City of Madness was. Yeah. That was I know. a wild series, man. Yeah. Christian and I are friends too. He's um we have we use the same rep at cons and so That's um cool. we just recently met in person for the first time in Very New York. Cool. And we hadn't worked together yet. And I mean I'd love to work with Christian on you know on interiors. Interior, yeah. <clears throat> but he's um he's actually kind of moving into doing his own stuff. Yeah, he writes which is yeah, which he's totally, you know, absolutely has earned the right to do. Um, but it was, it was really great to be able to bring him in on the covers on this too. So the Christian's a really nice dude. He lives in, um, he lives in not rural England, but he lives in the UK. Um, and not in London. We got to think of everyone in the UK is living. Oh, London. Cool. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, it's just su- like, super <laughs> nice dude. You think of Vegas. If somebody says I live in Vegas, they're like, what hotel do you live in? <laughs> I've, strip. I've had people <laughs> ask me <laughs> like, do you live in the hotels on the strip? And I'm like, uh, no, yeah. dude, no, no. Crazy. I only go to the strip when I have to. <laughs> no, yeah. I say yes. I say, oh, yeah, I live in all the hotels. <laughs> we, I well, switch hotels every week. Well, I mean, Shane works at a hotel, so he so basically lives at right. one. Yeah. Oh, that's true. I don't want to be on the strip all the time. Well, no, but you don't. You work at a restaurant in the hotel. Yeah. He actually works at works the hotel. In a hotel. So. Nah. It's a great. Nah. It's a great uh, Pluto is in here in the chat. He has uh, was asking, are there any artists that you'd want to work with that you haven't already? He says, I'd love to see you work with Dan Mora or oh. Greg Capullo. Oof. Uh, what are your thoughts on that there, Phil? 
<laughs> okay. Nah. They can say it. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Yeah, I'm good. Like, like, Morris, I mean, yeah, obviously. I mean, if they if they're like, yeah, dude, do it. You know, do you want to do Batman or Greg Capullo? It's like, I'll think about it. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Mora did sure. uh, a couple of yeah. uh, action cover comics or covers, right? He did one of the War um, World Revolution ones, I yes. believe. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yes, Dan has done a couple of covers for me. At least, at least the one he did the 1050 one. What do you think? He, there was one I, cover that they used that they used. I want to say it was initially a 1050 oh. cover and then it became a 1051 cover or something. It was like a shot of the whole super family. You know oh, what sorry. I'm confusing it uh, with? Uh. Capullo did kind of an alternative of the Steve Beach one, correct? For the uh, World uh, Revolution? Which, or am I losing my mind? The, you are. Yeah, the big like punch in the yes. planet thing? Uh, I didn't, I don't think I saw one of those. You're losing your mind. I'm going to, I'm going to Google. He's losing his mind. <laughs> Hit the Google machine. What else is no? He's You're losing his mind. trying to manifest reality. No, he, seriously. Yeah, I know. <laughs> for real. He <laughs> did, he did though do a cover for, Capullo's doing Marvel shit right now. And he did a, he did yeah. a Hulk cover for me. Ooh. Uh -huh. That was pretty cool. That was, that was one of the, that might've been the most recent one to come out. Like it was, uh, it was one of the, the Danny Earls issues that just happened. On Hulk, the the, the uh, quote unquote main artist on on Hulk, like the, the returning artist, has been Nick Klein. Klein, yeah, who is obviously crushing it. But right now, Danny Earls is doing an arc uh, issues nine through eleven, and either nine or ten. Greg Capullo did a uh, an issue of that, and that looked real. It just it was like a classic Hulk cover. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> like, well, there's Mark Brooks. It's not. Yeah, I was gonna say that's a Mark Brooks cover, but yes, I think it's the same. That might be the same issue though. Is that I'm the thinking. one that just came out, Frank? Yeah. Cool. Yesterday. Man, Danny <laughs> Earls is so Yesterday. Damn good. <laughs> I I um Danny Earls, his style is so different from from Nick's. And there are some fans who just like devoted Nick Klein fans, as they as everyone should be. But people but Danny has been doing this stuff and people are like, man, it's not Nick Klein. I'm like, dude. <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's frustrating. <laughs> there, Paul, yeah. Paul, they're Paul. angry. Paul. Yeah. Paul found something. So it wasn't like a, a spin oh, on God. the uh, Steve Beach one, but he did uh, one of the alternates for uh, War World Apocalypse 1. It's He's kind of holding the uh, sword in the air, and he's got the uh, sh the uh, figures of, like, Mongol and Midnighter and everyone behind him. Why don't you just show the phone? Because it's hard to see, I feel like. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's right. a great image, Sonny. You really, that looks you really good. Holy crap. Well, I, I would yeah, want to see it. That's what I would want to see. I'm not sure I've seen that. Yeah, yeah Capullo did one of the uh, oh, alternate covers for... Uh, Capullo uh, did a variant for nine. I think that's not cool. not ten. He did do one for the last issue. Nine. Okay. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Marcus, what up? No, I I had not seen that. Um, I had not seen that Capullo War World. So uh, oh, wait, cover. is it? That's cool. I'm, I'm... Uh, so you were talking. To, we're talking about Hulk, of course, and the. I mean, everybody's been talking about this big event that's going to be taking place within the Marvel universe, uh, Blood Hunt. Uh, Jen yeah. McKay is sort of the architect for that whole thing. Oh, we got Hulk the chat is going to have that. a one shot, and you're going to be doing the one shot. Is that right? Yes. Sir? Yeah, the art is the art for that one's just wrapping up. Actually, it's, it's looking really good. And that's oh. that's for that Danny one, Earls as well. That's Danny Earls. Yeah. Okay. Sick. Yeah, Danny Earls, man. He's a, he's this mm -hmm. Irish dude. Do you guys know about how this guy came around? Like no. how he got into comics? No. Oh. So he was he was a professional footballer. He's a soccer player. Oh wow! And really? he was <laughs> he's from cool. Ireland. He, he lives in Dublin, and he but he played in the states. Like not long after, like around the time that Beckham came over and made it try to make soccer a bigger deal over here, Danny was playing for American teams and um, just a, a monster athlete. <laughs> but he's like, I want to draw comics. And so while he's doing all that, he's he's just drawing all the time. And at some point, he's like, Fuck it, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And he's so he just started doing it, and he um, and Gail Simone was at a, a con. I want to say it was like in Leeds or something. It was somewhere in the UK, and she's just walking around checking out artist, just trolling Artist Alley, and finds this dude crushing it, and she's like, "Who the fuck are you?" It's insane. This this it's I'm looking good, at the right? latest issue right now. It's insane. <laughs> you yeah, should have been doing so this. Uh, yeah. He's, he's, his inks, like his line width and all that, is a uh, yeah. line line uh, weight. Is he's a master of the inked page. Yeah, it's and special. His, his environments are so unbelievably mm -hmm. atmospheric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like a when, it's, these scenes, these background scenes, like it's second to it's excellent stuff, second to none here. Yeah, 
there there are people who are so devoted to Nick when they see you know, when they see that it's a different artist, they're like, man, it's not Nick. I'm like, man, still I check it out. Good. Yeah. Like it's it's so I don't want to hear it. Like Nick is or yeah. Danny is so goddamn good. And he um when he when Gail discovered him, um, he was drawing like Batman stuff. Um, just you know, just on his own, not for DC. And she was just completely gobsmacked. And so she uh just like Twitter bombed him. It was like DC Comics, hire this guy to do Batman. Mm. If you don't, you're an idiot. And they did. Wow. So they hired him, like they they hired him to do like covers and stuff. That's cool. And um and now he's doing now he's getting work. He's like turning down work. He would have killed a man to do, you know, a couple of years uh, ago. Of course. Um he's doing Hulk with me. And he did a he did a puncher thing, he did alien, he did He's doing a lot of big two stuff right now. He's doing cover. He's about to do a cover for Superman. Um, doing doing brilliant, brilliant work. So, and he's also just a consummate collaborator, man. He's just the nicest guy to work with. Um, and anyone who, I understand that you know, you've, everyone's got their favorites, and I understand that his style is very different than Nick's. But anyone who talks smack about about Danny's work right now is gonna. They're gonna be deleting their their history here before too long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's, it's like. You know, imagine um, seeing Frank Miller's Ronin on the shelf for the first time, you know, like now, today. And, you know, seeing be like, man, it's not good. This is this doesn't look like Dan Mora. <laughs> and then time passes. That's a great yeah, like, point. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you don't, just don't get understand it together. What looking at. It's uh, those those pages like the, the shots, the shots that Danny did of Batman in Gotham were so unbelievably atmospheric and beautiful. It just fits Gotham so perfectly. Um, so when I saw Danny's work. Um, I and they told me they were looking at him for Hulk. I was like, I mean, resounding yes, like, get him. And I talked to Daniel, like, hey, what do you want to draw? What kind of environments do you want to draw? Because for me, he's all about just the. He's not just about the characters looking cool. He's about the whole, like the the environment that they're in is what, where he sure. really shines. And so we kind of settled on New Orleans as the as the place for this current arc. Um, I, cause I knew he would just obliterate it and he does, yeah. there's these, uh, there's all these catacombs, which of course don't exist in new Orleans because, you know, there's the water table is like the ground basically. Yeah. But, um, but there's the supernatural, you know, magic -y reason why there's all these hidden catacombs under the ground. It's like these cathedrals of stone. Underneath Sounds like the an Elden Ring. Yeah, dude. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> which I know okay. you've played. <laughs> yeah. Look, he's getting excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so. Uh, Danny's a Dark Souls guy too, so we kind of oh, nerd out sick. about that. He, yeah, he talks about he and I talked about the From Soft games and how when you're fighting the bad guys, you kind of feel sorry for them. There's like this, there's almost like this pathetic, sad yeah. quality to the monsters. You're not just like this big awesome thing. I'm gonna kill it. It's like, oh man, I gotta kill this big awesome thing because <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, there's always like this tragic backstory, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I created this creature called Frozen Charlotte that's very much one of those things. Like it's a it's a, a big boss battle with two stages that Hulk is gonna have to fight. But it's also this cool really sad character. And we see where it came from and we see how this she's been creating this really sad, dark, tragic version of heaven under the ground because she was exiled and and you know, Danny's just crushing all that shit. And he also gets to draw the city of new Orleans looking unbelievably great. And he, uh, I gave him an antique store to draw in new Orleans and that guy. So again, he lives in Dublin. Okay. So he's never been in an American antique store to my knowledge, but when he drew this place, the cop goes into this place and you see the little wire wrapped oh. around the little the CB thing that yeah. he's got. That wire is a real thing. I don't know how much you've been around cops, but it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, I was really impressed with that. And he's, he's got a little jar of civil war bullets on the shelf. Ooh, wow. And if you've ever, if you've ever been in an antique store in the South, that is something that you see there. And sure. I didn't put it in the script. Mm. There is, there are a lot of details I did put in there, but I was so impressed with Danny that he did all that. Um, so anyway, so we're getting ready to do this blood hunt thing. And I asked to get Danny back. So I asked him, what do you want to draw next? Just tell me what you want to do. And he, um, by this point in the story, we're seeing Hulk kind of make his way west. And I asked him what he wanted to draw. And he's like, you know, I, I, would, I really love drawing Old West stuff. And I never really get to. Hmm. You think there's some way you could work, work out something like that? And um, I was like, well, let's see. And I, I kind of try to figure it out. And um, have you guys ever been to Old Tucson in Arizona? I have well, like a long okay. time ago, but yeah. So, so for those who don't know, old Tucson is kind of near like legit, like 
Tucson Classic, like Tucson, Arizona. Um, but it's uh, it's this old. It's basically the whole city is basically just a like a, a movie stage, like mm-hmm. a film, like a film stage, where they film all these old westerns, and they've been using it for that for a long time. Um, so we actually did a chapter of the Hulk story that's set in old Tucson, so that Danny can draw old west stuff. <laughs> that's awesome. And we, <laughs> and we came up with this really fun way to tell a meaningful story about the American experience set in old Tucson. Cause like, there's a, there's a story about um, illegal immigrants. I've always kind of wanted to tell, not always, but in, le- in the last few years, this thing kind of came together and blood hunt, as you know, is a story about vampires. Um, and I just kind of was thinking about like, what if there's a, like a nest of a certain kind of vampire that kind of nests on the ground, kind of in the, in that desert between America and Mexico. Um, and uh, the kind of the story kind of develops from there. Like terrible. something that, too far away from civilization to really make it uh, in one in one night, you know. So they're kind of it's like this little hive that lives under the ground, kind of like the Descent or something. Mm. Oh, um, that's a great. So girl. that movie's terrible. So uh, I know it's great, right? I love that movie <laughs> so <Wow>. much. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so the whole thing is set in Old Tucson, and Old Tucson itself is kind of this to me, kind of represents the American dream. It's like this this big. You know, like the 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 front of a building with no back, you know, with no substance that ah. represents like America's. You know, look at look at the look at the grandeur of the American West, and then you get here, and these people have all these problems. Um, so anyway, we told a story that I'm very proud of with Danny at the helm. So um, that's yeah, Blood Hunt, uh, Hulk number one. Hope you that dig it. That makes me a little because typically speaking, the uh, tie-ins when a major event happens, the tie-ins for a lot of major. Uh, um, major uh, runs events or major individual comics and stories kind of derails them a little bit sometimes, but that sounds incredible. And like, it's keeping in the flow of what you guys are doing. It stays in the continuity, even though it's a one-off type story. Exactly. That's cool. That's, that's important to me. Um, There was in the new 52, one of the books that I liked a lot was justice league of America. Um, And that was the, I can't remember what characters were on the team, but I thought it was extremely well done. It was, uh, I think Jeff Johns was writing it. Mm. Yes. Um, and mm-hmm. then there was like an event or something where it was like a, you know, Justice League war or something where it was, it was Justice League versus J- JLA versus Justice League Dark, I think. And um, I don't know, man, I'm sure I didn't buy the whole event. I just, I was, I was following certain books and it really derailed the, J- the JLA uh, arc. Yeah. And um, I just kind of made a mental note to myself not to do that. Like I, um, and I know that sometimes that you're, you know, you're beholden to the shared universe. Everyone's playing with the same toys in the big sandbox. You got to play nice, but um, you've really got to try to find a way to to not bust up your, to not let the event bust up your story too. Like try to serve two masters at once if you can. Yeah. Um, and I really try to do that here. Now, obviously, I'm, I had an easier time doing that with a one shot than anyone, any anybody would have with several issues that those guys were messing with back then. But um, I really wanted an issue that would belong in the trade paperback for this story and not, and uh, not have the readers feel like they just got jerked out of one movie and put into another one, you know? Yeah. I felt like that happened a little bit with the fear state and nightwing. I think I've talked about that. You did. You mentioned that. I think, I think Tom Taylor and uh, what Rodriguez did with the fear state nightwing was, was enjoyable, but it kind of detracted from the rest of what they had going on. Yeah. Um, in that book, but it's, it's really, again, good to hear that, um, that's not happening with, uh, the Hulk in this. And then I wanted to go back a few minutes. I wanted to correct myself and give credit where it's due. It is not Craig Capullo. It is Mario Foxillo or Foxillo. Who uh-huh, did the okay. Audio. Yes. It looked so much like Capullo. I had convinced myself it was Capullo, but I know what you mean. I do know that cover. Okay. Yes. That is the one I was thinking about. So I just wanted to correct so that. That one makes sense. Not the first one you were talking. It's, that makes sense. <laughs> okay. Get together. All okay. right, Paul. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, shout out to everybody in the chat. Everybody's Marcus been, is over there. Uh, Marcus! I know. <laughs> 
looking, <laughs> looking, looking, looking great. Hey. Hey. Hi. Hi. Decked out, man. I know. My yeah. goodness. Yeah. No, you did the green. You did the green last time. Yeah. So now two you times in a row. Now he's yeah, yeah. One was for St. Patty's Day, and and then the other one was because I had this really cool Green Lantern hat that uh, Nick from Shimson's Comics gave me. So I had to. That's right. Had to represent. Rep it, had to rep it again. And and now he is Superman. Now I'm Superman. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> it was. It wasn't planned for for our guests. By the way, I. Just oh wow. He just, just, just had it. Was it. Just had it. Was well, the Green Lantern would have really worked for him for you for a bunch of reasons. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true yeah. too. That's true. Yeah. Our resident John Stewart. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. I love wow. that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, <laughs> hello everyone. Was, man. Was, was, how's it going, PKJ? How you doing? Good, man. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Good to be back. I was yeah. waiting for him to run with it. Wouldn't. No. Oh, no. He left it alone. I know. <laughs> <laughs> for once. Yeah. For once. <laughs> But you I'm, underestimated. I'm, hey, I'm just enjoying being blue right now. He looks so. like a crazy person. Look at <laughs> <laughs> I'm blue, God love I'm it. Yeah. yeah, God love it. Well, you know, working in public service will do this to you. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> yes. Trust me. Thursdays, I yeah, yeah, I'm not like this during the regular days. No. <laughs> Anyways, uh, anywho, anywho, so the uh, where are we? The giant sized Hulk. Have we talked about that and how that's coming together? And did it get pushed back a little bit? And what's going on there? It did. I, it, you know, it was always planned to come out after issue 11 because um, I, I guess the, like the, I think the memo came out late to, to retailers or to previews or wherever it was going. It, people are expecting it earlier than it's coming out. The reason is that um, in, the, in the final issue of Danny's current run, issue 11, like issues 9, 10, and 11, that's the frozen Charlotte arc in New Orleans. And in issue 11, the status quo of the series changes quite a lot. Mm. Um, so, and it's, uh, it's really important that giant sized happens right after that. Gotcha. So, um, I was going to uh, send, okay. I was actually about to send you the giant size today. And, um, and I realized, Oh crap, this is going to spoil 11 real, real bad. Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> can't do it. And I've been, I've, like, um, <laughs> so yeah, I will send you, I'll send you 11 and giant size together so you can see, see where it All goes. Right. All right. Good. <laughs> yeah. um, Sounds good. That's been me. really fun. That was, um, as you know, this whole story, the whole Hulk, the whole Hulk um, arc has been um, kind of a, like a creepy celebration of America, the, the American South. Yep. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of Southern Gothic, Gothic stuff. Yeah. Love it. Um, it's not all the South proper. Like we're, we're going to be going to, to Vegas soon, actually. Let's but go. Um, All right. I can't wait yeah. for that. So you, you can look for yourselselves in that book. I'll get you in there. <laughs> nice. Hey, hey nice. don't make so, me start sweating. <laughs> yeah, you got you to tell me what hotel you live in. I'll put it in the book. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a creepy celebration. <laughs> Shane lives in the Mandalay Bay. Sonny lives in Resorts World. Don't give him any press. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't give him any press. Mandalay Bay? Or? <laughs> Either I, one of them. Go ahead. I've actually I've actually learned Cannery. a lot in this book because I um I had a lot of comics and forget I'm I may have actually mentioned this last time I was on here I hope I'm not repeating myself but um since I come on here so much because I love this show as you guys know uh, hey. uh, <laughs> but but yeah I um I've learned a lot here because I I have a lot of old books in which I, I mean my my love of comics came from a relatively small stack of stuff and I didn't have a lot of consecutive issues. I certainly didn't have many runs that continued no. for any kind of length. It was usually just like one issue by itself or two, maybe three. And so when I had um anytime I had two consecutive issues, if it was a two-parter and I got to see what happened next, it was like a big deal. Right. Um and I just love the the one and dones. So I really wanted this series to be kind of like that, just like constant jumping on points. So I wanted people to just be able to pick up a book anytime and not have to do a bunch of homework to catch up. Right. Um, I think there's something really cool about that, that comics can do that I don't see done in comics that much. The comics that I tend to read, um, especially the ones I enjoy, honestly, the ones that I, where I really love the craft of it, the one, it's not really shortcoming, but the way that it's done is that like, you have to read the entire arc or sometimes several arcs to even know what the fuck's going on. Right, right. right. And, and thought it'd be fun to, to have a story where it's a little more contained. So that's what that's the rhythm I've fallen into on Hulk. I wanted to just show the thing that kind of the through line of the series is really the relationships between Hulk and Banner, between Hulk and Charlie, and between Banner and Charlie. 
mm. like this this kind of like hate triangle between the three of them. <laughs> yeah, where right. she, she really admires Hulk because he's so strong and she hates her her own perceived weakness and she sees that weakness in Banner, thinks he's a skinny nerd and she kind of looks down on. Um, so seeing that whole relationship um, change is kind of what drives the story forward. And there is this underpinning of the, the eldest stuff and the yeah. mother of horrors and all that, but it moves to, it moves forward very slowly and incrementally so that the re- new readers aren't lost. But I, I have been kind of keeping my finger on the pulse online and I do, it does seem like readers want more forward momentum of the, of the ongoing mother of horrors stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm, okay. I am bringing that forward now. Like, I, so in, in issue awesome. 11, there's a big shift that happens that is going to make the eldest stuff and the mother of horrors um, mystery and all that much more prominent. Mm. Uh, and that's, that is what leads us inexorably to Vegas. Uh, well, we're, Phil, we're, we're in, in New we're Orleans. Evil, evil lurks as we all know. What's that? <laughs> we're in New Orleans, right? Hulk is in New Orleans right now. Are we yeah. getting some strange Academy something? Maybe I don't know. Oh Maybe. yeah, because those yes. those kids are in there. Oh, hey. yeah, yeah. yeah, those kids. Yeah, are, there's gonna be, yeah, those there's kids gonna be some there. strange academy action too. That's another that's another wow. nice short arc. But that that's also very that also drives the story forward. Very cool. Um, very with, cool. With Elvis Sick. and everything, and that's that's Nick Klein back on back on art duties as well. Nick right. does wow. uh, issues twelve and thirteen, which are strange academy. And then issue fourteen is one that's really I'm really excited about. That's a, fourteen is a standalone issue. Okay, nice. Um, okay. And we have that giant sized issue that gets us westward. The giant sized issue is one I was excited about too. There's a monster that I've been kind of wanting to play with. There's like a, there's a thing in that book called uh, Patchwork Jack. Mm. And Patchwork Jack is kind of a like a crossroads demon sort of, but r- rather than, rather than living in a like a like a literal crossroads he's a he's almost like a like an evil spirit that haunts a railroad oh that's oh very cool Hmm. yeah i'm pretty excited about it i like patchwork jack a lot um so anyway (laughs) just another one of my another one of my little creepy monsters i wanted the story where um i love all the idea of seeing hulk just slowly demolish a train over the course of an issue (laughs) that's Um, great i feel like i feel like that would be really (laughs) opportunities for really (laughs) <laughs> What's that? Sorry, Shane. That's what you were getting at. Like, he was like, I have to do this. I have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is something I need to see and have done. Is him destroy Period. slowly, slowly destroy a train. Oh, sort. dude. <laughs> yeah. Pretty There's awesome. a lot of opportunities for cool visuals yeah. in that. Absolutely. Right. 100%. Well, I think that lends to what you were talking about with the uh, jumping on points because this, like, the comparison I would make to especially like the Ghost Rider episode or episodes. See? Ish, see? There you go. Um, okay. Yeah, man issues are um there is a i brought it in once to the show the uh prequel to original sin uh where it's kind of a revisiting of uh the wolverine and hulk's first fight where he's fighting the windigo oh wow that's funny because uh, pluto pluto just said can we get a wolverine uh, oh well, the, uh, there you go uh, <laughs> um and you know. uh that right, was Pluto. sorry. Please continue, Paul. Oh, that I, I was just gonna say that was a comic I had when I was little. Like you were saying, it's not really. I don't have all of the original sin. I, I it's not something I had all of or had every single one of the issues and still don't. But that one little issue was so cool. It's cultivated it's my love in comic. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I think stuff with like the Ghost Rider issues, especially all of it, but the Ghost Rider especially, really really drive that home where yeah, 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 yes there's sure. a story uh continuing through all of them but the individual comics there's such cool just stuff happening yeah, in moments. them it's going to make you want to read more just because of that so i think i think yeah. you're succeeding there a lot and now wolverine and the hulk tell us how you're going to do that yeah i was like the people want wolverine <laughs> sure definitely well, the uh the style of uh that style of stor- storytelling could be appreciated cuz even with um uh Batman, Superman, World's Finest. I mean, oh sure, yeah. That that's very episodic. Jumping on points, yeah. Yeah, that's very episodic, and you can enjoy it. You just pick it up, jump in, right in. You don't feel like you have to do a lot of homework. And there's, you know, know. we we definitely love the the guys who can play the long game. You know, the Jonathan Hickmans and so forth that who can just do a a whole big story with a really banging payoff at the end. But at the same time, you, you kind of not always want that. You kind of want the episode. Yeah, you, yeah, want, you want the really cool episodes. Yeah, the cartoons the... in, in, in <laughs> yeah. written form, you know. That exactly, kind of yeah. Yeah. And yeah, the one that yeah, includes uh, the Wolverine. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> monthly Fall. monthly comics offer an interesting challenge in that you do ideally you want to do both. Where right. that's what I'm kind of finding is that you do want forward momentum, but also something something big and uh, distinct that happens in each issue. Like yeah. boom, this is where Ghostwriter shows up. Boom, here's Wendigo. Here's Wolverine or whatever. Oh! Something to make. Something to make every. <laughs> hold on. Now, what what, what happened there? Yeah. I want Wolverine. <laughs> now, Bob. Okay. I, I will say each each uh, each arc or story within well. the whole thing has been <laughs> has been influenced by as some kind of a inspiration for it. Of course. Um, the uh, the War Devil Ghost Rider thing was so. actually this is kind of a downer story, but it was um, I found out that there was a um, <clears throat> there was a kid who died in the Uvalde shooting um, in, in Texas, and his dad, his adopted dad. Um, um, one of them, one of him in a book. Oh, wow. And he was the, the kid was the biggest Spider-Man fan ever. Um, and if you look back in issues six, seven, and eight, there's that little boy, Leo, who, um, who's in those issues and he's got a Spider-Man shirt on. Oh, so, wow. um, so cool. Yeah. That's the kid's, hard. the kid's actual name was Uzziah. Um, they called him Uzi for short and, you know, can't put Uzi in the book. So we, I, I asked him who. Uh, just, I asked him a lot more about about Uzi, and he said that he that Uzi was a Leo and was very proud of it. Like his that wow. was his like sign. Oh, okay. And he just he really liked that, so he goes by Leo in the book. Okay, uh, that's awesome. Very cool. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of moments in the book that are kind of you can you can tell the influence of what happened and who who Leo was as a person, but also what happened and what we're trying to avoid here. And um, so, the ghost of vengeance, the spirit of vengeance in that in that story. Instead of being uh, inhabited by a living person, it, it's tied to this little boy. Like he's, it's like his, it's like his guardian angel. You know, like there's a there's a part in the story where Leo talks about him, about his uncle Sal, and how like Sal is like, he's like an angel except mean. Ah. Uh, how he describes him, he's a, he's Sal, he's Leo's guardian angel. So that's what that's that's where that arc came from. The story of the War Devil. The War Devil kind of represents PTSD and. Um, kind of turns PTSD into this uh, like folk tale about the first hunter of men um, that came from the the plains of Africa and became this monstrous thing over this over the generations. Wow. Um, that's where that came from. Um, I had my I had other stories for Frozen Charlotte and any there, um, sometimes I uh, have a very specific story that I want to tell. The story about um, Patchwork Jack comes from this old song, this old American, this old um, American like mountain tune called um, Ruben's Train. And mm. there's a the bad guy is kind of singing that song to himself throughout the throughout the book. There's this line in that in that uh, in that song. It's an ancient song. It's like it's well over 100 years old. Um, there's these really old recordings of it. And there's a line in it. Like, uh, how's it go? Dun, 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 dun. Got me a blade, I put Reuben in the shade, starting me a graveyard of my own. Ooh. Ooh. And just like the, there's these, yeah, there's these little House. metal parts of that song yeah. that that I found really creepy and cool. Um, so I just I turned it into a Hulk story. I just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As one does. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I and I have been dying to get Wendigo into this fucking book. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Wendigo's so, what a great uh, yeah, Wendigo's so, a great character. But since. as I as I say, this is this is all a shared universe, and I so I have to kind of ask permission to use stuff because I make to make sure it's not appearing in some other book. Oh yeah. And I will say that I have asked specifically about Wolverine and Wendigo. Okay. There you go. And th and they're both getting used in other shit. Mm. Okay. Uh, so on I, the back burner. I can't from. right now, but. <laughs> The cool, the cool part about that is, and there are other, there are other monsters too that I've asked about, monsters or characters that I wanted to use, and whenever I get a no, so and also in their in Marvel's defense, it's always for a good reason, of right. course, um, yeah, get, oh, in, the, in the in the bigger picture, but um, whenever that they say no, then it gives me an excuse uh, to make up something new that's n not right. unlike the thing that I wanted to use, but also original and i get to add more lore to right. the marvel universe kind of win-win oh, nice. that's cool that uh, so we actually have a caller have we uh, this isn't happening very often I, I don't know if they're calling hey. to ask paul out or yeah last time this happened it was to 
try to get my number, so we'll see what we'll happens. See Let's happens. see. I, I hope it's an actual <laughs> caller. Caller, are you there? I'm not single, Paul. Wait a minute. Paul's not single. Paul's not single. Hi, I'm here. Oh. Uh, that sounds Hello. very familiar. I had a question for Sonny. Oh, Sonny? You a question for Sonny? Oh, God, okay. Is this Barney? <laughs> no. Don't I think it is. That. I don't care about Paul. <laughs> no one cares about Paul. Go ahead. Sonny a question and wanted to know if Sonny was Maybe if Sonny was single, <laughs> Sonny, he, he is. I'm, I'm not. I'm not, buddy. Um, he is. I'm not. Okay, well, forget it then. It's PB and J. This thing here, it sounds like PB and J, and I want to know what's your favorite jelly. <laughs> Sorry, who's that? Who's that? I don't want to spread it. That's for you. That's for, That's you, for you, Phil. Yes. What is your That's favorite jelly? He wants to spread. <laughs> Uh, it could be a woman. I don't think I've eaten jelly since I was a kid. So I couldn't tell you. <laughs> oh God. She. I believe she wants. Is that a? a... Oh, you failed. You failed. <laughs> you <laughs> failed this. Sonny, thing. I'm. I'm comfortable. Sonny, are you sure? Are you sure you're not single? I'm so sure, dude. It's a woman, I believe, I, ma'am. All right, next. <laughs> Forget it, then. Next, Paul. I want to shave you and take your hair and glue it onto my <laughs> nipple. Okay. All Marcus right. Walk. All know, right. <laughs> I can pretend I'm single if you like. Uh, uh, this is Shane, by the way. I, I got no problem uh, with it. Oh, I I think a, it might, oh Shane. I think it might be time to move Shane, on from this phone every call. Every time I watch the show and I see you, yeah. all um, I think of is a big, beefy burrito. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks, caller. It's like place like to go sour to cream in your beard. Oh, my, my word. Myself and PKJ will contact you after the show. <laughs> oh, Bye, Barney. Mm. Have a great day, Barney. Barney. Thank no, you. We love you. you. I uh, hope you're not wearing the wig right now. It's Babs. Oh, it's Babs. No. Oh, yeah, that's right. Not Barney. It's Babs. Uh, see, I told you it's a woman. It's Babs. Okay. <laughs> Thank oh. you, Babs. Oh. Thank you, Babs. Love, love you, Babs. You. Wow. That was so, uh, that was so sweet. Uh, first and foremost, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. Right, so. You don't have to. He's down. It's all in good fun. Yeah. So, oh, he's down. Oh, so, Anyways, we're, we're so PKJ. He, he, he actually, you, you brought up something that was very interesting, and I'm not sure if I touched on this last time Please you were on, on, but... But um, so you have to ask for permission to make sure other characters aren't used and, you know, so you can use them yeah, yeah. or whatever. So do they do the same thing with you and Kine? Because I've seen Hulk, uh, you know, you've, you've been in She-Hulk. Uh, Hulk has been in She-Hulk. You. Uh, splashed yeah. in there. And then I just read the most recent issue of Blade, and he's also in, uh, Hulk is in, uh, I think, issue eight, I think. He, he makes an appearance. Or issue nine. Issue yeah, they thing. so th yeah, yeah they, they they do they do come to us and ask for yeah they well they usually they'll um like the editor for whatever book they uh -huh. want to use Hulk in will will approach my editors and then my editors and I will have a conversation about it like hey what do you think and usually they'll send me like the the pitch for it or uh -huh. what the context is and um and yeah I mean I'm not gonna I don't know man I just need to make sure that they are kind of catching up on the new status quo. Like Hulk has long hair now. This is this, yeah. this is Hulk situation. It, he doesn't talk. He, there's no baby talk anymore. Right. Um, there's like little, little things I need them to be up on. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm not going to insist that they, you know, I need you to write dialogue just like me, or I need right. to have final write off or anything. I'm not even, if I was going to, if I was going to insist on something that douchey, I'm not sure that Marvel would even let me. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, <laughs> but I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, impose my will on someone else because they're using my character. Because first of all, it's not my character, really. Right. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, I'm sure. trying to play nice with everyone else. And uh, as long as it doesn't fundamentally break what we're doing, yeah, right. I'm not going to get in the, get in the way. One request I did have, I recently got another request and I just asked that they, um, this might not even matter to someone else. I want them to use the same lettering style that we oh, use. Okay. Oh, okay. Cool. That makes sense. Kind of like um, with Thor. Thor has a same. Yeah. Exactly yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, Thor has yeah, that lettering. Exactly like that's that. very ancient looking. Yeah. Very yeah, regal. they kind of have that stylized look for Thor stuff. When we right. were first, when I first got a copy of, I think I mentioned this to you guys before, when I got the first pass at the first issue, Hulk was lettered like everyone else. It was just mm. like yep. white balloons and black borders. And I was, and when I read stuff like that in a comic, I'm kind of like hearing it. Yeah. And um, it kind of felt like Endgame where Hulk was talking with Ruffalo's voice. Oh, right. And, you know, that movie's great, but I, it didn't sound like Hulk though. I want Hulk to sound like this godlike yeah. thing of like force of nature that right. 
Um, like in the, I always, I always think of Fellowship of the Ring where they did the Balrog and all the sounds that they made for the Balrog, like the, the roars and everything that did. It was mm-hmm. all they had combined. The the, uh, the audio engineer, the sound engineer had um, had taken all these sounds made by different kinds of stone, like uh, like lava blasts or avalanches or just rocks smashing together, or whatever, and combined everything to make these crazy roar sounds. I thought that was so incredibly dope. Yeah. Super um, sick. I want I want Hulk's voice to sound like just you know eternity. You know, it should yeah, be this really right, powerful right. thing. Wait to it for sure. Yeah, exactly. So when we did it, I asked Corey, uh, our letter Corey Pettit, if they could do something really unique for Hulk that we would kind of be forcing other other writers <laughs> to, 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 <laughs> then, to then use on other books. But this is now what Hulk's lettering looks like. Nice. <clears throat> And there's was, there was this great panel in that first issue where, like, the, when we first when he's transforming and the first time he comes together and like all in one, like, boom, now he's Hulk. He says something in that panel like, "Banner's mine," and um, and he's kind of like looming down, like low and big. And uh, Corey sent me that page with like twenty different balloons, like uh, with dialogue styles all the way around it, just like "Banner's mine," "Banner's mine," "Banner's mine," and then the whole art team, and editorial team, kind of just just kind of horse traded on like what we wanted to use. Like this wow. looks really great, but what if we thicken up the line right here? What if it was mm-hmm. green here? What if it was dark green here? And just kind of settled on what we now use. Okay. And that's um, very cool. There was so much love that went into that. Phenomenal. I really want that to be the way it's Hulk really... talks like forever more, you know, right. whether he's in a, a team book or whatever, it would be awesome if he always sounds like that. Yeah. Right. So that's, that's been the thing that I kind of like quote unquote insist on. And it's easy uh, to, it's uh, easy to get that lettering. Like you go, you go, you know what I mean? Like how do you, if you're doing a Hulk book or you're doing a book that has Hulk in it, is it easy to uh, grab yeah, that how lettering? Do you, how do you, like, yeah, how how do you, you forward that lettering? Or is it? You know, I don't, they, I don't, I never found out what the font is called. If that's one that Marvel like has in a folder somewhere or if right. that's one of Corey's. Cause some letterers have, have fonts that they have designed themselves. Right. And mm-hmm. they, um, I don't know if that was one of Corey's personal ones or if that was one that's more stock. Um, but even, you know, regardless it wouldn't be that hard to get it or find some, find one that's yeah. like super duper close. Nice. So, um, yeah, that's cool. That's good. I love that, like, <laughs> that attention to detail. Yeah, that's never, cool. That's all. Yeah. I never even I feel like it matters. Yeah, it, it, it does. Yeah, matter. It does. Yeah. It does. And it's noticed for sure. Oh, absolutely. Cause Thor yeah, is good. just, Thor is always the same. Yeah. That's ain't that, yeah. that Roman kind of regal Deadpool, font, every, you know, yeah. Deadpool yeah. has his yeah. own sort of thing. Well, going. It also hurt, helps you immerse in the character more, absolutely. even absolutely. if it's just for like, like I read, uh, the first volume of, uh, the black Knight uh, by Cy Spurrier, like a couple weeks ago and Thor is in that comic very briefly, mm-hmm. but it just makes you like, you oh, hear it. This is Thor. You in hear this it. Comic. You're reading right. it. You know, right. This is the right. Thor from the other comics Correct. I read in this book. Correct. And I, that totally, what you it guys works. are accomplishing with the uh, yeah. lettering now for Hulk. Yeah. I love that stuff. That's uh, those, those things, man. There we go. Brennan's got a nice comment. Letters are so underappreciated in comics, but they make such an impact on the box. Dude. Nice. This, yeah, totally. Yeah. Especially yeah. There is Hulk. Corey. I, you know, and actually a side product of that conversation with Corey on issue one really made him feel invested, like part of the team, you know, like it's, oh yeah, I don't, I never want the letterer or the inker or whoever to feel like they're just like the help. I want all, I want us all to be a team. Um, so that was one way that that kind of, that kind of happened. There was like others, just other smaller things too. Like, um, I don't know, like sometimes I like to, depending on what the, what the context is, sometimes I like to have a, a, um, a balloon end with no punctuation. If it's, if it's, if it's interrupted really abruptly or if it's leading, if they're right. like falling unconscious or something, I don't know. I just like to, sometimes I like to have a series of balloons in which there's no, like usually like a smaller font and no punctuation at the end it has, it's a different kind of effect. Yeah. There was uh, there was something in um, issue four or five where um, Charlie's running through, like they're, they're in, the Everglades and she's running down this, this flooded road. And there's this place, there's like this swamp haunted by the, the swamp, witch, mm-hmm. and, um, it manifests ver- like fleshy versions of, of people. It can, it can find, uh, it can kind of in- intrude on people's minds and find lost loved ones and come to them as like, li- as physical, like ghosts kind of and like lure them into the swamp. Yeah. And, um, 
she's running, trying to find, trying to catch up with with Banner, who has abandoned her. And she looks into the swamp and sees her little brother there, and he's just a little bitty boy just standing in the water. Mm. And she's like, "Charlie," she he calls her Charney because he, you know, can't pronounce it. Yeah, yeah, a little kid. Yeah, it's like Charney. I'm I'm cold, and it's all like it's all lowercase. Mm. And um, he's like, pick me up, you know, it's mm. and it's just this really creepy little wow. kid thing that I really I really wanted them to have all lowercase stuff. Just these little things to me. I mean, I just hear the book when I'm reading. It. Absolutely. Yeah. I, right. I feel like those little things go a long way. And it also makes the letter more invested and in think about these things. And I just I like all that. Yeah, absolutely. It makes you more invested in the character and gives quite literally gives the character a voice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, for sure. 100%. Yeah. Also, the Pluto who asked about Wolverine, I believe. Yeah. Yep. Um, I did find a way to use Wolverine in the future. Nice. Oh, so, nice. And and so look out for that. Yeah. Um, whether it's in oh man, what can I say? Let's spoil and everything. Um well, I know there's a, there's a, there's a lot of uh, you know, cuz He's probably being used a lot right now in terms of them rebooting the X Men universe. Well, he's also kind of about stuff, to be in a major so. motion picture, so they probably want him in as many things as possible. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. So it, it, it's probably one of those things where they're probably trying to, you know, you know, the character make sure. can't be in a hundred places at once. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even though they do that. No, with but I, I mean, Ghost Rider forty four. <laughs> Ghost Rider forty four got a lot of love in the Ghost Rider thing, so we're doing another. We're doing more with him. Okay, nice. we're okay. gonna see Wolverine again too. Yeah, yeah. People love Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider, whether it be I don't care if it's Johnny Blaze, if it's Danny Ketch, or it, it doesn't matter. The you know Ghost Rider, I it's think. A lot, uh, yeah, he's yeah. one of those characters that they 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 kind of they they really kind of keep him kind of close to the chest. They don't really overuse him a lot. So yeah. when people see a Ghost Rider book, they jump on it because they're like, "Cool, Ghost Rider." And you he's know. so visually. Like impact, yeah, absolutely. Yes, he's, he's such a rad. I bet you character. artists have a ball just trying to like just do whatever. Yeah, from, yeah, he's from such the beginning, a rad he's character. been just stunning to look at. Nick no Klein's who's, who's drawn art him. for those Spirit of Vengeance, uh, yeah. the Spirit of Vengeance yeah. art with yeah. the flames of the Ghost Rider yeah. against yeah. the green back backdrop of the Hulk. Yeah. Are you kidding insane. me? Yeah, that is, that is yeah. really yeah. That's, that's a dope variation. Yeah. That's insane. And honestly, yeah, well, if, here's a here's another spoiler. So oh. if you um. As you go through the series, you'll see these little good guys show up now and again, right? We saw Swamp Thing. We saw Ghost Rider 44, Uncle Sal. We saw, um, now we're seeing Inspector Bergeron in New Orleans. There's other characters coming up. So there are, there are lots of little team-ups that we're seeing, and I want to bring all those characters back at some point. Nice. I, one of the things I kind of love about this run, though, is that it's, yes, we're getting like cameos, if you will, yeah. but it's not just like, Look, it's Iron Man. Yeah. Look, it's Captain America. Yeah. Right? It's, it's yeah. more like deeply entrenched, like, yes, Iron this character Man. would actually be in this comic at this moment. And they yeah, are, it's gotta be organic. Yeah. 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 If got it's gotta feel real. And I like I like how that that it appreciate I appreciated Blade for that because it tied into what Blade is going through right now with, with the cameo of Hulk being in his issue. So it's right. I, I honestly think that that might be a great way to go into like they should do that more often. Rather than just doing these little weird events like uh <laughs> gang war and and some of these ones that, that just really didn't hit right. There it goes. I I I'd rather there they just go events. ahead and just start doing more those types of cameos where sure. kind of you know kind of like with De Daredevil and Punisher, where Chip Zdarsky and Jason Aaron's Punisher kind of they're they 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 cleverly interweave their stories together. It was really good. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. One of, the, one of the best examples. Also, I realized I said Swamp Thing when I meant to say Man, man Thing. So man Thing. We I'm got you. Sure we got you. I'm sure they're, I'm sure they're lighting me up in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was, I was, I was going to say um, one of the best examples of that, though, Marcus, is what I thought when uh, in New 52 when Scott Snyder was doing um, Swamp Thing at okay. DC and – Jeff Lemire was doing Animal Man. They tied the red and the green, like the oh. there's like the red and the green, and then the the rot and all that. And yeah, they tied Parliament those of together. The... I thought that was brilliantly done. Yeah, Parliament of the, like uh, the... trees or Parliament, Parliament of the exactly, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... I thought that was done extremely well. Yeah, if they do more than that, more like that, that would that would be a lot to me. That's a lot more uh, of um, 
uh, appreciate it than you know a um, what's what's wrong? Shane? Yeah. What's going on? Mark? Those damn glasses, Yo, glasses, man! I'm like trying to take you seriously. I'm trying to get immersed in your question. I'm like Mark is blue the Kanye over here. Like, what's man. going on? Man. Blue Blue Kanye. <laughs> blue Kanye. Blue Kanye. Come on, dude. <laughs> It's all right. It's going to be okay. a different color. Ne- it's going to be a different color next week. I bet it will. No, I'm sure you got all of them. Paint. I do. I do. So, uh, so I'm kind of your friend. I'm kind of interested. Uh, I know you mentioned that there were some characters that you probably didn't get the okay on. Is there anybody that you really wanted to be in this and you just did not get the okay on? Uh, when to go on Wolverine? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah honestly, yeah. those were the ones. I um, but we did figure out a way to get to get Wolverine in there, but it's it's not not quite as simple as just like showing up. Right. Um. So you're gonna see him in a book, but it's it'll make sense when you see it. Okay. I, I can't right. just, no, no, he's, he's not just he's not just gonna wander into the pages of Incredible Hulk because there there was an opportunity <laughs> for that to be. I thought that would be really cool. Um, Hulk, Hulk and Thor. Wanted to use. Hulk and Thor. I could never get tired of them <laughs> coming together. Hulk and Thor, they're great together. I'm sorry. Whether yeah, they're yeah, battling each other or no. they're being frenemies or they're friends, so cool it, it, they're, 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 they're a great dynamic. You know? friends to love well, us. I mean, yeah. I did get the okay on this one, but I, I really, I knew that I wanted to use Brother Voodoo right from the jump. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah. I, okay. I, I think, I think, I think he's cool as shit. He's Dr. Voodoo now, but he's always Brother Voodoo in my heart. I just yeah, love, yeah, I yeah. love that character. <laughs> Heck yeah. Um, School teacher yeah, now. Kind of, what, else, what else can I even say? Um, someone else I wanted to use. So far, I've gotten away with most of it. There was, um, I mean, I'm not, I'm never going to say never on this character, but I wanted to use Werewolf by Night on a specific, in a, in a specific oh, moment. That'd be cool. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, that would have been rad. That, yeah. that didn't work out because, um, because he's about to have his own thing. That's been announced. I can say that. Like, it's already, um, okay. there's a, there's a really cool, uh, Werewolf by Night issue coming out, drawn by Adam Gorham, I believe. Okay. Um, that that's gonna be great. Um, and okay. I wanted to use them too, but it's not. It wasn't a convenient moment. And mm-hmm. in fact, there's because you know there's two. There's been two Werewolf Werewolf by Nights. Um, there's Jack and then the other dude. But I, they're yeah, they're both being used, so it didn't really work out. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, I'm not. Gonna, I'm never gonna say never on that. There could very well be. I hope to write this book for a long time, so there could be a chance to do, use them later on. Very cool. Um, we, we hope you're writing it for a long Frankie. time too. Yes, Thank sir. you. Do you uh, do you have something for us? Oh, I was just going to mention the local uh, LCS uh, Maximum Northwest. If you're uh, in the area, go over there, check them out. Uh, Feral came out this week, and I know everybody's got like multiple covers for that stuff. Um, the creators of Stray Dogs, uh, Tone Rodriguez, Brad Simpson, Tony Fleece, as well as Trish Forstner. Uh, this is Feral, and this is the Psycho homage. For that cover nice. there, uh, we That's met awesome. the artist yesterday. Met the artist yesterday at the LCS. Um, his name is Jason Crimes. If you can oh, think wow. of a guy who That's could write so a cool. or do art for a horror comic, <laughs> cool better Jason than Crimes? Jason Crimes. That's so cool. That is, also, it could be That's like a, a, a detective uh, series. Go get me Crimes on the <laughs> yeah, phone, dude. <laughs> okay, but anyway, uh, we're going to be giving this away. If you're uh, resp- if you're subscribed and you respond down there in the chat, we're going to be giving a, cover, a copy of this. He signed a couple Very of cute. these, so we're going to send you one of those a little uh, prize pack deal. Also, I'm going to do the, uh, I'm going to throw in the Mark Brooks variant for uh, oh, Incredible yeah. Hulk number 10. I'm going to send that out to you as well. I'm taking that. And um, yeah, if I don't know if you had a chance to read Feral. It's uh, The Walking Dead meets the Aristocats. It's uh, <laughs> creepy. If you like Stray Dogs, Phil, yes. I think you'll enjoy Feral. It's, it's the art is incredible. Uh, the coloring, everything, it's really well done. <laughs> and I didn't find this out until yesterday, Phil. This is an ongoing, ongoing series. I, uh, Stray Dogs was a limited series. Right. This is going to be an ongoing thing. I'm really looking forward to it. Good first issue. Good start. Nice. Very good. Stray, go. Stray Dogs is great. Yeah, yeah, Stray Dogs is really enjoyed awesome. It. Is it just as, as feral, just as dark as Stray Dogs? Or? Uh, so far, not as dark. There's a, some... Uh, there's some uh, gore. Yeah, there. there's oh, okay. some, some but things. Not as <laughs> okay. not quite as creepy, scary as okay. not yet. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say dogs. not yet at least. But uh, a good good start, man. Really okay. good first issue. Awesome. I gotta pick that up. I'm picking that up this week. Maximum Northwest. Go visit those guys. Go check yeah, them those out. Guys. Yeah. You're gonna make a challenge? What how how are how are people are winning? Uh respond to the chat if as long as you're subscribed. Make okay. sure you're subscribed. Tell first. a friend. Yeah. Tell a friend. Tell the auntie. Tell them about Blue Kanye. And, and make sure you're subscribed. Yep. 
and tell us what you're, what's the, your favorite horror comic you're reading right now. Ooh, okay. Ooh. And you're what be is your favorite horror comic you're reading right now? And, you'll and we'll be pick at random, and comic. we'll send you a copy of this signed uh, stray do- uh, stray dogs feral like number that. one. I like that. Signed by the cover artist again. His name is Jason Crimes. That's the coolest name. Your ever. favorite the uh, psycho homage. Nice. It? Your favorite horror comic and why it's Crocodile Black, even though it hasn't come out yet. <laughs> when Crocodile nice. Black comes out, we'll be doing a giveaway for that as well. We'll be yeah. bu- buying plenty of covers. All to, give me all the covers. Yes. <laughs> like me all the covers. Moment. I, I kind of want some boots Thanks, now. Guys. Yeah. That's right. Some crocodile boots. I want some crocodile boots now. <laughs> Y'all know I'm gonna get some crocodile boots. <laughs> I know. If you, you come will. up in here and some crocodile boots, you know I'm gonna laugh and I'm laugh. coming in here and some laugh. crocodile Phil, boots. Phil, really quick, we've got a few more minutes. I want to ask you about uh, Green Lantern War Journal. Uh, yeah. so it's been great. John Stewart's oh, whole dynamic you. has been an awesome. It's been awesome to read. Stellar. Him wow. being, you know, uh, no kind of watching out for his mom <laughs> and just. <laughs> It's great. John Stewart's one of my favorite Green Lanterns. He's my favorite Green Lantern. Thanks, Lantern. man. And it's, really? Uh, I, I really appreciate uh, your writing oh, with this character and within this series. It's been really fun, and I can't wait until you take over Justice League <laughs> towards the end <laughs> of the year. It's going to be great. I'm speaking it into existence. Uh, yeah. So let's cut the cameras, and uh, <laughs> let's have a talk for 20 minutes. Yeah, he's not going to tell us. He's anything. not going to tell us. He, never, he, he likes his job, and we like that he I has like that his job. I like that he likes his job. He'll never you tell know? us that nonsense. I'm telling you, this is nonsense, us even bringing this up. He's never told us a thing. We just speak it into existence. That's <laughs> yes. all. Well, well, that's not true. That's, <laughs> that's not true. true. That's not true. That is true. Uh, <laughs> I will have to ask, though. I, I mean, first of all, yeah, Cro- Crocodile, <laughs> what, what you sent was great. Amazing. Amazing. I can't wait till it comes out. I'm glad you were able to read it. Mark. Thank yeah, you I, I was able to read it. Yeah, I so, read it. And yeah, super creepy. Super. I just like it. The way it built. It was really good. Um, Thank you. I do want to know. Um, so, as far as John Stewart is concerned, is he a difficult character to write? Because he's one of those characters where he doesn't seem to be written as much as uh, DC. You know, in the doesn't DC have universe, a lot of consistency. Yeah. He, he doesn't have a lot of consistency, and I'm thinking it's because of kind of like with Superman, where he's kind of like the 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 good boy. He's the Boy Scout. The boy Scout. Yeah. You know, yeah. and a lot of people don't know how to really. Approach you know, it seems like it's difficult to approach someone who's so perfect, if you will. Boring. So, yeah. I mean, is he difficult? <laughs> no, but he's a badass, though. That's yeah, the thing. He, like, he is, but it seems like it. He he's not utilized as much or written as much, and you don't see much of him. So I'm just kind of wondering if you found him to be a challenge. Maybe that's a reason. I don't know. Uh, man, I love writing him. But it mm-hmm. is, it is a little challenging in that... Um, because a lot of the stories I've seen with him in it up till now, both in animation and um, in comics, of course, um, it's a little inconsistent depending on yes, what the writer absolutely. needs from him. You know, right? Because there's there's a lot there's a lot to him depending on what parts of his history you draw from. You know? Right. Um, but very often he's written in the context of a team book, and mm-hmm. whenever you write a team book, you kind of have to have almost like a shorthand for every character. Yeah. And that that can be you have to write very concisely. I thought that's something that um, that was something that Bendis just ran a masterclass on with New Avengers was how to write so many characters so efficiently. Mm-hmm. Um, you could just like any you could. I mean, if you had the whole series of New Avengers with no art and just balloons, you could tell who was speaking at any given time. I thought that was really great. Yeah. Um, John's John shorthand is too often just kind of like the grizzled ex marine drill sergeant type dude, mm-hmm. right? And right. not not always, not right. always, but sometimes, and some or sometimes just like, you know, I'm ex military, so that means I'm super squared away and everything is like perfect. Like, right. <laughs> man, y'all need to meet some more soldiers, right? <laughs> right, uh, exactly. That is that has not been my own experience. Um, <laughs> also, I understand he's a marine. Sorry, you don't right. call a marine a soldier, or vice versa, because that's not, that's right. not a done thing. Yeah, so, yeah. There's a some animosity. Don't want to step on any toes. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. <laughs> Pro- yeah pro- professional rivalry, I should say. Oh, yeah. yeah, there's um, yeah, there's definitely some inconsistency because I mean, like, even like, okay, so he's supposed to be modeled after like uh, Sidney Portier. So he's supposed to be this like you know very like champion kind of like in the time in the seventies when you know you know the positive black image was supposed to be projected forward and all that. But then you read like you know, hard traveling heroes or in that era where he's written and he's just <clears throat> sounds like this archetypical, 
you know, black man, angry black man. That's like, hey, what's happening, whitey? No, oh, <laughs> chill out. I got my freedom papers. I'm good, bro. Uh, you know, and then you go Sick fast up. forward to, you know, to the modern times and he's more polished and squared away. Like most Marines, uh, you know, typically the image of a Marine is they're very square. And having worked with Marines, yeah, they are by, by far more prepared than the Army. Sorry, guys. But <laughs> yes. get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> Let's go. As, a, as an Air Force, former Air Force guy, yeah, I did enjoy. They they had their stuff together a lot more than the Army guys. But anyway, that's another conversation. Whatever you say. Yeah, he's like, sure thing. PK, PK, Blue PK. Kanye. Why, I did not see this beef coming. Uh, it's, it's out, okay. out of your way, Sivvy. <laughs> it's all Maybe. good. But so, I, it's just, I, but so yeah, that, that, that inconsistency is just like, I, I wonder if that's, yeah, that's probably the challenge, I guess, because of the inconsistency, inconsistency and having to go back and try to figure out what is his actual true, you know, history and where to draw from, you yeah. know, in order to, to push him forward. You know, what needs to be retconned, if anything, and that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Um, honestly, the thing that makes him hardest to write is how much he means to s the different populations i mean mm. i mean mm. mostly in my opinion i mean i mean you can speak more to this but um just you know black comic fans who right who want who want to see themselves on the page you know yeah um mm. so he matters there obviously but also military people want to see him portrayed a certain way also right. there's kind of there's um there's people who want to see um man i don't know how to say this exactly someone who like who's who doesn't see themselves in like a Luke Cage and they want to see a different kind of, different right. kind of character. Sure. Right. Yeah. Right. Not, um, oh, that makes sense. And, and some of the old, some of the way, sometimes the way that, um, the way that John has been portrayed in the past can be kind of Luke Cagey. Right. In a, in a way, in a way that is not unflattering, but it's maybe a little. Samey. Just, oh, just, much. The, the Black, stereotype. Yeah. Yeah, it's right. stereotype it's like for one path. I right, get it. black exploitation, that whole Luke Cage yeah. blade, right. uh, the same way blade I think gets too, in the too. classics, you know, blade stuff yeah, where it's just exactly. kind of very that that Harlem kind of like you know cool guy, gritty. Right. You know. Cause, yeah, because I mean, I actually when I got to write Blade in um, in Marvel Zombies, I did Marvel uh, Marvel Zombies Resurrection and Blade right. yep. Blade in there, yep. and I asked, I was you know, looking back on the character's history, I was like, okay, now is Blade. British or is Blade from Detroit? Is that Detroit? Yeah, the D, bro. No, for sure. For sure. That's awesome. Which version are we doing here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let let is he Wesley or is he? Yeah, let me know. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. That's yeah. awesome. Because so, I mean, there's 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 different versions, you know. Right. Like, which way we're doing this. Mm -hmm. Um, so with John, I just, I know how much he means to people. And I, I, um, and I also, I, I understand that I'm writing John as not a black man and I don't want to, I, I can't fuck that up. Yeah. Right. I, I need to, I need people to understand how like the, that I, uh, that I feel the weight of it. Right. right. I do, I do have, um, I am military and I think that does give me a little bit of cred to write John that I might not have had otherwise. And I, I do have things I want to say about John as a service member as well. Right. Um, I've known a lot of people to come back from, from, uh, from overseas service who come back real fucked up. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And people who come back and they, they're used to being dialed up to 11 all the time and they come home and they got to figure out how to drive the speed limit again. They got to figure out how to, how to exist in a world where their adrenaline is like at basically zero instead mm -hmm. of super heightened all the time. Yeah. It just right. makes people drive fast. It makes people quick to anger. It makes people just like on edge when they shouldn't be. And yeah. It's just, it's just, it's bad. And yeah. John knows yeah. all those people and he's trying not to be one of them. He's trying to, you know, he's trying to run errands for his mom when he's just been in space on these crazy epic adventures. That's great, yeah. Right. And he's, he's trying to just like, you know, fill his mom's pill bottle and not go out of his mind with like anxiety, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. The, the uh, only thing I want to touch on for Green Lantern before we start to wrap up is I think Marcus touched on it about how he, he's like, not out on like Clark in that he is, the most morally upstanding guy in most rooms. Yeah. And I think much like with Clark, you have done a good job of putting him in a situation where his morals are almost going to, like he just wants his mother to have the life that she thinks she has and thinks she does. And he thinks she deserves yeah, right. and it's hurting her because of her dementia. So I think you're, you have used in my opinion, his goodness 
as kind of almost a cr- not a crutch, like a something he has to deal with. Like he's right. like, I can't save everybody yeah, in right. every situation right. all the time. Yeah, and I think I, that's. I feel like I feel like John. So the aspect of John I wanted to show the most. I grew up with John as the architect. Like most mm, of my yeah. comics that I had as a kid were old, even when I got them. Yeah. Um. So I knew John as the architect, and I do remember those like black exploitation kind of bits of dialogue, and I. But I, but primarily he was like the builder, you know, mm-hmm. and he, and, but even more than that, he was the guy who took his mask off when he became yep. Green Lantern. He was like, I'm John Stewart, Green Lantern. I'm not afraid yep. of shit. I'm yep. going to do the right thing. I'm going to show That's my right. face while I'm doing it. That's my favorite. And to me, that makes him like the consummate superhero. Right. Um, more so than, and like literally any other superhero, the fact that he can do it and show his face. I don't need Clark Kent. I don't need, you know, I don't need my cape and cowl. Right. I'm, I'm right. the man. Yeah. You know, I wanted, I wanted to show that. And. His hero is his civil rights leader mother. And I thought that made a ton of sense. I thought it made a ton of sense that he would be the guy who just has this inherent mistrust of masked vigilantes mm. as you know the, the son of a woman who marched with John Lewis and Medgar Evers and whoever else. Like this is that her mother, his mother is like a legit hero. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, so I wanted to see her kind of falling apart and him falling apart as a result, the woman that inspired him to be a hero, like his greatest hero. There's a line where he says like, you know, you should have got that, that ring, not me. Oh, oh uh, yeah. You know, yeah. You know? so okay. for him to see her falling apart, is like killing him, you know? Right. So I, I feel like John would use his power to create this fantasy for her to make her comfortable and happy in her, in her mm-hmm. last moments, you know? And there was a guy that came up to me at a convention, uh, a, a, um, a caretaker, somebody whose job was to take, was to care for people like that who have suffering from dementia. And he was like, you know, John's making a mistake with this. Cause he knew that he, um, he had just seen that he created this, um, uh, this, he recreated his sister. Basically he made a sentient construct of his sister with the ring mm-hmm. to kind of take care of her in his absence. Yep. And he said, you know, it's not supposed, you're not supposed to do that kind of stuff. This is yeah. John's making a mistake. And I'm like, I know that man, <laughs> but that's what, yeah. that's what I would do. Yeah. You know, like I, yeah, I mean, what's the harm? Like, I, I understand that it's you know it's not what you're supposed to do, but yeah, yeah you're, you're watching your mother like just like scream and pain about like her like remembering again that her daughter is dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you go know, to like, any lengths. I, you know what kind of a heartless so and so would not use their power to to make their mother happy again? Right. You know. Yeah. I want to see I want to see John struggling with things that we struggle with. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So like, Absolutely. how how does like the consummate superhero? deal with problems like this that you can't shoot at. That was kind of the, the thing behind War World Saga too. Yeah. With yeah, uh, absolutely. Like how, how does Superman save human trafficking victims or uh, refugees, you know, the people that don't, well, human trafficking victims that don't want his help, that don't think they need him, who hate him, you know? Right. And now John is having to use his power to do this other thing. So yeah, I felt a lot of weight in writing this character in part because I need to, I really need a lot not let readers down, mm-hmm. but also because, um, you know, because we're telling stories that, that matter in that way, you know, and also because we're, we're adding elements to John's mythos right now that, in my opinion, have not been explored enough. Like, I want to see more of, of John, the brother and the, the son and see see his kind of fighty elements, too, his aggressive elements where, like, you know, Veron comes at him and says some – talks some trash and John's like, keep telling me what I can't do. I love <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. That part's great. Definitely some fertile yeah. ground, and it's beautifully written. So, yeah, I definitely appreciate the book, man. Absolutely. You're doing an amazing job. Thank you. Absolutely. I, Thanks yeah, so much. Absolutely. 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 So I'm honored to get to do it. Phil, you never let us down. Uh, we are winding <laughs> down right now, and it, it always goes by so fast. Yeah, I know. We appreciate you taking the time and uh, making yourself available. Yeah. Uh, con season, what do you have coming up as far as appearances coming up soon? You have a con coming I need to lock some of that down, but I'm, I'm definitely doing Terrificon in Connecticut. Okay. Uh, cool. That is in, I want to say August. Um, I'm going to be actually out of the country um, for for most of July. Cool. But I'm doing Terrificon right after that. Um, I'm most likely going to be doing Baltimore and New York. Oh, cool. And um, start, I will say starting next year, I'm going to be much more available for for stuff. I um, Right now, I'm still active duty Army. Which is, as everyone knows, superior to the Marines and everything else. <laughs> um, yeah, um, got him back. Got him back. Uh, right uh, Marcus, just, so, just get those con ops in on time. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
I heard some. I thought I heard some civilian in the background. Say something <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, a proud, a proud civilian at this point. I'm over it. Uh, I'm over all of it. But I'm over anyway. All of it. Um, as I was saying, that's great. Funny. Yeah, uh, I'm. I'm only going to be in for about another year, um, and then after that, um, I hit my 20, and then I'm going to be. I'm nice. going to be doing more, more cons like at, cool. in the U.S. and abroad, and doing that's other stuff, awesome. some teaching things, and oh, yeah. so I'll be probably doing more cons next year. Um, but for now, it's going to be Trifcon, most likely Baltimore and New York. Looking and forward I cannot to do San Diego because I'll be out of, out of the country. But no. Um, yeah. We'll see Looking what's forward next. to it. Uh, again, thank you for taking the time. Marcus, yes. what do you got for the people real quick? Hey, uh, yeah. Check out any of anything that PKJ is writing. It's all stellar. Hulk, yeah. Whether, you know, any of, any of, yeah. Be on the lookout for his upcoming self-titled or self self-titled create uh, create create your own <laughs> <laughs> work coming out it's really good i enjoyed it and i look forward to seeing more of uh john stewart being you know his mythos being expanded yeah there's definitely some fertile ground for that so yeah keep going brother i appreciate it sunny yeah thanks man i appreciate it it's not uh, we i this was a great episode i was excited this whole time to just kind of like soak up some information you yeah. know what i mean every single time he tells stories about oh, anything yeah. whether it's something he's inspired by or Always something good. he's working Always i'm just goes fast. i just sit oh, here good. and i'm like okay it's been an hour and a half okay, <laughs> yeah I let's know. do another yeah. 45 yeah. So. uh shane what you got uh, my beautiful wife Eva said this was a fantabulous episode. Fantabulous. Uh, she, loves, she loves PKJ with all her heart. Oh, man. And she loves me as well. Yep. <laughs> oh, does she? Paul, how do they find Thanks, us in the single you. world? We, uh, you can find us in the social worlds at Into the West Comics on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Uh, Twitter's actually Into underscore Comics. We're posting clips on the regular now. The audio podcasts are on. Uh, are on Apple Pods, Spotify, Spotify, anywhere you can find them. Again, thank you, PKJ. This is super awesome. We love talking to you about this stuff and just hanging out with you in general. Absolutely. Yeah. Always, always appreciate yeah, it. Yep. Always we great appreciate you. you. Have a great evening. Love and you. we'll talk to you soon. <laughs> and just keep up the awesome work, man. You kill it. Yeah. Thanks, man. You guys we too. appreciate you. I appreciate you always. Yep. Yep. See you next week. Thank you, chat. Thank you for hanging out in yes, chat. Yes, uh, chat. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye.